Maxine Waters in an interview calls for individuals to take to the streets if Chauvin is not convicted of murder charges. Andy No reports on the uh, uh, violence going on in D.C., um, specifically um, from BLM. Chris Cuomo calls for the white uh, people's kids to be killed. And finally, NBC News reports on the defense uh, theory in the Chauvin trial, calling it racist. Uh, we do a deep dive into these stories as we prepare for the end of the Chauvin um, court case this week as closing arguments are expected for today and tomorrow. Um, and then we expect jury probably, you know, end of this week. So this is your April 19th Not to News update. Please like and subscribe if you're looking for daily news content and let's add on the on Starting us off, we have Jack Prosbyek's Twitter, where Maxine Waters is marching in Brooklyn Center tonight and told people to take to the streets if Chauvin is acquitted. Uh, here's a bit from the We're looking for a guilty verdict. We're looking for a guilty verdict, and we're looking to see if all of the talk that took place and has been taking place after they saw what happened to George Floyd, if nothing does not happen, then we know uh, that we've got to not only stay in the street, but we've got to fight for justice. But I am very... Notably, we have to remember that Trump also used the language of fight, and this was counted the number of times that uh, Trump used the word fight in, in, before the events that happened on January 6th. Maxine Waters was one of the individuals that said that the wor use of the word fight was a call for violence. So I can only assume that, you know, by her own standards, she is calling for violence if Chauvin is found acquitted of any of the murder charges. Um, this comes as another story involving police officers this week. Um, Lionel Virgil accused of throwing bleach in officers' face, tossing lit Molotov cocktail at other officers in Brooklyn. This comes from CBS in New York. Um, a, Connecticut, uh, a Connecticut man was taken to custody Saturday after al allegedly hurling bleach in an a uh, New York Police Department officer's face and throwing a lit Molotov cocktail at others happened around 8 a.m. in Brooklyn. The incident started early Saturday morning when police pulled over a 44-year-old man for running a red light in the area of, of Clarendon Road and 45th East Street in Flatbush. When police said the man threw bleach in the face of officer before speeding off. A few minutes later, not far away, officers stopped the vehicle near their, um, the corner of 54 and Snyder. Suspect then allegedly threw a lit Molotov cocktail at them. The bottle bounced off the New York Police Department car and broke when it hit the street. Suspect again sped off, only to crash. He was then arrested. At that time, officers discovered three additional Molotov cocktails in the vehicle. Yeah, in the vehicle. The suspect has been identified as Lionel Virgil of Bridgeport, Connecticut. So I don't think this individual is particularly uh, directly related to any of the protests currently happening. Um, specifically, we see protests rising in Portland. Um, that one's more just, you know, their typical Antifa stuff. Um, we've also been seeing a new um, set of individuals in Minneapolis after the uh, case that happened last week there. And then there's also been a lot of BLM protests happening within Washington, D.C. Um, this event in New York, I don't think it's directly related to any of those. Um, however, it does show the sentiment that's being currently held throughout the country that's very anti-police um, and just kind of shows how there's a giant disconnect, in my opinion, between um, individuals that have a respect for the law and those not. Um, speaking of the... Um, DC BLM protest. Um, Andy No reports BLM protesters damaged the Columbus Fountain in front of the Union Station in Washington, DC, using fireworks and spray paint and then attacked responding police. Um, this kind of just hits at the uh, direct uh, comment that we just made regarding the um, just disconnect. I'm gonna keep the uh, uh, video in the background as we talk about it. Um, but I think what's really telling is that they're doing this at Union Station, which is one of the largest parts of the city. It's you know, right the middle of, you know, everything. It's the biggest metro stop. And they're literally just committing this violence on, you know, public property in front, broad, well, not really dead like as it's at night, but just broadly in front of uh, police officers, which just shows the direct, you know, disrespect for law, disrespect for common citizens that, you know, want to appreciate this type of art. Um, this, you know, is a cement piece that's by Union Station. One of the you know, central things there. Um, I know Union's one of the frequent spots that I get off of just because it's kind of the middle of the city. There's a lot there. There's a lot of restaurants. There's, you know, the malls are nearby. Um, and it's just really upsetting to see stuff like this. Uh, coming from Fox News, Chris Cuomo says there won't be police reform until white people kids start getting killed. 
Uh, CNN Chris Cuomo Friday during Cuomo primetime said that police and gun reform won't happen until white people's kids start getting killed, shooting gun laws, access to weapons. Oh, I know they'll change, said the anchor. When your kids start getting killed, white people's kids start getting killed. Um, Cuomo put a hypothetical accent and pretended to be a white parent. I don't know why he needs to pretend when, you know, I'm from last I checked, Cuomo is white. <laughs> What's going on with the police? Maybe we shouldn't even have the police, he said. That kind of madness, that kind of mania, that will be you. That will be the majority, because it's your people, Cuomo said, apparently directed at the white members of his audience. How many more, Cuomo asked? Die of the pandemic, dying from police shootings, George Floyd, Dante Wright. I wonder if you'll remember the name six months from now, because they'll be replaced by so many others. I think what's really scary is there were um, just how, how, how much numbers are being just directly, like, not, you know, even known when it comes to stuff. There was the story about a month ago. When um, any individuals were asked, you know, how many um, unarmed black men were killed in the United States in every single group, regardless of gender, regardless of political affiliation, uh, drastically overestimated number of individuals. Um, and they even gave some, you know, room for, um, uh, what, what's it called? Uh, a margin of error um saying that you know it could kind of range from 17 to 30 but i believe like even the conservative republicans were in the ballpark of like hundreds and there were li the liberals that were in the thousands and stories like this just don't help the story not using you know data that's you know good and able to be shared across um you know the 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 aisle just makes it so we can't have a good conversation on what actual meaningful reform wants to happen. The biggest issue I have um, when it comes to a lot of the gun reform that's being proposed, uh, specifically we looked at the executive actions being declared by um, Joe Biden last week. Um, the biggest issue with them when we looked at all the different proposals that he had is that none of the um, different executive actions that he was calling to do are actually going to have any type of meaningful impact on gun crimes within the United States. Um, I think the biggest thing we have, though, is that we're attacking the wrong thing when it comes to this type of gun violence. Um, oftentimes, individuals are you know, looking for an in-group. They're looking for some type of participation in a community. And oftentimes, the individuals that come to committing these types of crimes are the ones that have been just vastly you know, outcasted, um, they don't they don't have their circle group of friends or whatever um and you know they're either the bully or the bullier and unfortunately you know it, it takes some type of common decency before we can have any type of meaning change having any type of gun regulation in my opinion isn't going to solve the vast problem of violence that we have throughout um, NBC News on Twitter um, had the following opinion piece by Dr. Varian Mario the key Chauvin defense theory is racist it's also medically ridiculous so it'd be interesting if when you um click to the article though he has a completely uh different um headline here um seeing seeing that you know the twitter post was um you know walking back you would expect this to be the headline right no uh job and trial defense rest after smearing george floyd with false overdose theory um you're welcome to say that it's false obviously the part of the uh, purpose of having a court is to determine um you know what what the purpose of the um in, in what, what the how the death actually happened or whatever um and unfortunately by just saying that it's racist or whatever you're not actually getting to the um meaningful impacts of the death um the piece ends up being a hit on one of the defense witnesses um and they even go into how he was a part of the apartheid in south africa um and that was the root of their uh Ra the, ra the racist uh, remarks. I think what's telling though is if you've been watching the trial, there hasn't been a single mention of race as far as I know. There might have been some in opening statements, but not a single witness has mentioned race. Not a single uh, def uh, lawyer has mentioned race during the trial. I think the prosecution has essentially given up on trying to make any types of claims when it comes to this being a race targeted event. Uh, finally, also come from NBC News, lackluster performance by Chauvin defense le leaves um, defense leaves experts debating trials outcome. I think ultimately what you see in this piece is that they um, kind of attack the defense and prop up the um, a couple of the witnesses on the prosecution. And I think the biggest thing here is this just shows the lack of interest in the defense of Derek Chauvin. You have to remember what needs to be laid out during a court case. They're trying to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Derek Chauvin's knee as the police officer was one, breaking police protocol, and two, actually did the, or resulted in the 
excuse me, resulted in the death of George Floyd. The pr defense does not need to prove anything actually killed um, George Floyd. They just need to say that there's reasonable doubt that Chauvin was the one responsible for it. So uh, I thought the following point was kind of interesting. The prosecution has argued that Floyd died of insufficient oxygen or asphyxia caused by Chauvin's knee pressed to his neck as he lay pinned to the ground with his hands cupped behind him. The defense has said Floyd's drug use and a bad heart were to blame. That was not what w was claimed by the defense at all. The defense laid out, I think, believe it was four or five different theories, and most of them include, included Chauvin as um, part of the reason why Floyd died. The entire argument, though, is that Floyd was, or sorry, that Chauvin was not the primary responsible agent when it came to uh, George Floyd's death. Um, they also mentioned Chauvin declined to testify, invoking Fifth Amendment. Um, that's pretty common in stuff like this. Um, and then finally, they go into the strongest witnesses in the trial were Chief Arundondo and Dr. Toman. Chief Arundondo um, was the police chief and pr pretty much just said that Chauvin's um, actions go against the department policy. However, this was directly contradicted by some of the prosecution's own witnesses, as well as the use of force experts um, called in by the defense. Um, and finally, Dr. Tobin and the... Um, the um sorry the um i forget the name of the expert that um the defense brought in but um essentially the each side had their own um expert scientific expert um that kind of went back and forth uh tobin was brought in as a rebuttal witness to at least attack one of the theories that were brought up by the defense um but all in all i gave my predictions last week when we did the week three summary i am expecting acquitted on the two uh, murder charges and the manslaughter, in my opinion, is still kind of a 50-50 coin flip. I'm probably leaning towards he will be convicted for the manslaughter charge. But once again, um, that might just be my own personal bias. That might just be how I, you know, quickly watch the trial in, you know, two times speed, all in, you know, one sitting for the entire week or whatever. Um, so there's obvious bias in how I saw it, and it wasn't the same way that a juror would have been um, experiencing the trial on their... And this is your April 19th Nazi News Update. Once again, please like and subscribe if you're looking for daily news content. Have a good one. Safe.